Hello and welcome to an eggplant brief. Today, Max is going to show us how image and OCR recognition in eggplant can recognize changes in the browser, screen resolution, application version, font type, size, and color, and much more, all with the same snippets. Take it away, Max. Today, I want to talk to you about how powerful eggplant's image and OCR recognition is for changes in things like the browser, the screen resolution, the application version, font type, font size, font color, background color, and how we can actually use the same snippets even when all of those things are changing. The example we're going to use today is Salesforce, where we're going to be looking at both the lightning and the classic versions and seeing how we can reuse all the same snippets and image and OCR searches across both of them. Now, the first test case we're going to go and run is going to be across Chrome using classic with a large resolution a 1920 by 1080 resolution. And what we're gonna do is just gonna first of all click play on that test case. So now we click play. And what you'll see happening is we'll start doing the actions against the system, but we won't care about what the resolution is, what the browser is, because our intelligent image and OCR searching is flexible with all of those different changes, which really massively helps reduce maintenance when you've got these different changes occurring. So you can see there we're using OCR to search for username and search for password, which will of course work the same when we go and switch to Firefox in just a moment. The first thing we're gonna go and do is go and check that we're in classic mode, which we are. And then we're gonna go select on bookings and then go to the home screen, select accounts, then go to the billing city and then close. So you can see there we go and select on bookings there. Now in this part here, we're actually gonna click on a header called booking name, as you can see there. Now in this case, that doesn't actually do anything. It's just a header and it doesn't have any sorting functionality. But when we go and move to Salesforce Lightning, that will actually change its behavior so that that button now looks different, but actually it will do a sort on that particular column. And the same goes here for Billing City, as you can see there, it doesn't do anything. So even if the underlying code changes and the underlying behavior changes, our exact same snippets will go ahead and work against those different buttons and then against those different underlying behaviors, meaning we reduce maintenance and allow your test to continue. So let's go and adjust that test case now. Let's remove those. And now let's go and add in, let's say our browser this time is going to be Firefox. Let's say our version of Classic or Lightning, let's say this time is going to be Lightning. And then finally, let's go and see our resolution. Let's say so we have a small resolution, which means our width is only going to be 1600 this time. So we've got a different resolution. Now we're going to play that exact same test cases, just with those different conditions. Click on play and you'll see I've made no changes to snippets. I've made no changes to the model and the same journey goes and continues. So let's go and see this run now. So you can see there we launch, as you can see here in our smaller, more square resolution. Just make that a little bit larger there so we can see a bit easier. We go and launch the Firefox browser, as you can see here. Just go and wait for that to load. And again, we're using the same snippets to go and log in. There isn't like a Chrome snippet and a Firefox snippet and a different resolution snippet. It is all the same underlying snippets. And if I go and quickly show you these now, let's take an example, you know, clicking on the text bookings. We click text bookings and we wait for this to appear. And here we're just setting some rectangles to speed up our search. And if we say go to, um, uh, let's do another one here, uh, opportunities. Again, just clicking text opportunities, which doesn't care about resolution or application version or anything like that. So you can see here, we click on bookings in Salesforce Lightning, but this time what you'll notice is when we go and click on booking name, it does an actual sort. So the underlying behavior of that header has changed, but our snippet is identical. And the same is gonna happen now here when we go and select accounts. So you can see we click on accounts, and this time uh, when we go and sort by uh, billing city, which you'll see here, it actually clicks a button that does a sort for us. So that whole behavior of that button has changed, the same snippet goes and works for us. So you can see there how amazingly flexible we are to different browsers, different versions of the application, in this case, Salesforce Classic and Salesforce Lightning, resolution, 
font colors, they were different across the two. Font types, they were different across the two. Uh, font size, again, different. Background color, different. So all of these different changes going on, the same snippets continue to work. So now I want to show you what happens when we actually update our model. And does that update all of our test cases? And the answer is yes. So let me show you. Let's say we go and add a new action to our model. And we'll go create a new action here. And we'll say go and call this contacts. So let's just call it contact 77 for now, just as an example. And we just go and add a snippet to that particular action. Let's say, okay, say go and add the click text here. So we don't need to write a new snippet. We're just going to parameterize a snippet that we've already got with the contacts text. Let's go add a variable in this action here. I'll just call that, say, contacts. And let's say that's going to be text, initial value, just contacts there. And let's say that's non-generated. And then what we can go and do, we can just pass that in here. So I haven't had to write any new snippet there. I've used this other snippet I've already got that we can parameterize and pass the text you want to interact with in. You'll see here that when I do that, my coverage heat map is actually highlighting the fact that we haven't at any point gone and selected contacts because, of course, that's a completely new action within the model. So what we'll go and do is that the underlying AI engine will go and focus more on that particular area because we know that it's new in the application. That's going to be an area of high risk. So what you'll see now, let's go click on run on this particular model over here. And we'll see now, we'll start automating our exploratory journeys. So we're going to launch this time. And again, at this point, I don't actually know what data we're going to go and use because I'm not sure whether we're going to use a large or small resolution, but we'll be looking at previous test results, looking at our test cases and looking at the coverage to go and see what the best set of um, variables for us to go and generate is for us to go and do the most effective testing to help you hit your business outcome. So you can see now that's just beginning to launch and this time we've decided to go and choose Firefox, Lightning and a small resolution. So you can see there we've gone and connected in and we're going to start running this test. And what we should see happen here is that we start focusing our testing around that contacts action because that's an entirely new action in our model and so it's something that's new to the application and is going to be more likely to have bugs and so we should go and focus on it more. So you can see we go ahead and log in now. And once we log in, we're going to start exploring the application exactly as a real user would. And even if I'd logged into different versions of different browsers there or different uh, resolutions, our contacts action would still go and work. So you can see there we click on contacts and now we're deciding to go back to the home screen. So we're just going to be focusing our testing around that contacts action and all the different combinations because that's where a lot of the changes have occurred. So hopefully you can really get an idea now of how flexible Eggplant's image and OCR searching is. So if you've got applications that are changing underlying functionality and underlying coding, resolutions are different for different users, um, font types, font colors, font sizes, background colors. If all these things are changing, Eggplant is the tool for you because we are really flexible to all those changes. Thank you, Max. That was a brief demo about how Eggplant Image and OCR recognition can use the same snippets even if things like the browser, font, application version, and resolution change. If you have any questions, please visit our website or reach out to sales at eggplant.io.